Hey everyone, this is Crumbs. I'm back here at my mega build perimeter, and uh, uh, I went ahead and added a little something in. So let's uh, go check it out. Since this perimeter is so, so large, <laughs> I bumped up the, the render distance to 24 chunks. That way you can actually uh, see everything around here. It doesn't look like it's just something that exists in the middle of nowhere. But I'm uh, back to playing on my, the standard 16 chunks. So as you saw on the time lapse, this is basically just, uh, a, again, a decorative build. I do have a lot of space inside it, and that is the center of the outpost there. So eventually I may come back if there's some reason for it and uh, make it actually decently fast outpost farm but this little thing here should serve the the purpose i need to, to get a raid farm going in addition to just setting up a faster outpost farm in here i may use this as the the crafting and sorting system for the for the raid farm itself so I this I, I give some use to the structure <laughs> but, but yeah it's mostly just a big open space inside a, a build that i tried to make on a again a larger scale so this farm is very simple i just have four spawning floors I made out of sand, and I used water to push the mobs that spawn here over to the, the center. They'll go up the column and out the door, and then across over to the, the future raid farm. And I have it set up so that, in general, all the floors are open, and there's a clock that sets off multiple pulse extenders that just relay the signal up one floor at a time to, to flood it over. So that way, mostly, so that way, most of the time, all floors are, are open for anything to spawn. And when I turn it off, it just sends signals directly 
to each level to to flood each each platform so that way nothing can spawn in here anymore. Now this is really small, it's really slow, and it's off to the side. A bit of that's because the the AFK spot for the raid farm is going to be at like Y equals 140 something. So I, I can't actually use most of the space in here while I'm AFKing uh, for the raid farm. So I need something small and off to the side. But I, I could definitely expand it a bit off to the, the sides. So there are faster ways of doing this. I just yeah, I just came up with this and it works. So that should be fine. I think the, the oversized banners turned out pretty well. I basically just took the, the pattern and blew it up. And tried to find the blocks that looked about the same color. And the like. And I ran... And this is the output from the outpost. So I'll we'll just drop the little guys down here. And he's just to collect all the, the smaller banners. Which I think works pretty well. But as you can see down there when you get too far away. Like render. Like they pop in and out of existence. So I don't think there's any way. At least in this version to, <laughs> to fix that. I have the entities. The, the distance for it to render entities turned up. A lot and it still doesn't, doesn't fix it. So that's a little annoying. But I guess it works. I'm glad I found a, a use for the for some of the mob, for the, some of the mob heads from my mob head farm. Uh, you know, it's it's easier to find some way that just shows it off, but I think it's cool to be able to incorporate them into a build in an aesthetic way that actually that actually looks good and isn't just there to to show off that I have a mob farm, that, that I have mob head farm. So these elevators, as you saw in the time lapse, do work. They they add also like an interesting aesthetic element that kind of breaks up the the large long sides these huge structures and uh i figure it's a way that'll make it easier if i ever do need to get something all the way up from from below you can see the flashes of light from the <laughs> the light updates from the upper uh, from the upper elevator you can see here uh, that i just used a wall to send the signal autumn immediately from the top down and it activates both the top and the bottom at the same time and from the bottom if you hit the note block that's up over here It'll pull out the, the soul sand. That'll change the, the bubble column. So it sends a signal basically instantly up to the, the top as well. And because I had the, the bright mode on during the time lapse, you didn't really see this very well. But these lights do turn on at night. I just have a, an item popper with some, some stuff in it. With some non-sackable items in it. That puts out a signal. So that'll uh, so that all the lights will turn on at night or when it gets dark. So I was doing this before I covered some stuff over. So I'll need to go back and take a look to see if I need to revise how this works. As you can see, this is still obviously incomplete. I do intend to fill this in and uh, add a roof on top as well. But for now, it's a bit painful dealing with everything when it's dark. So I'm just leaving it open for now. So that way, when I add in like the sorting and storage system in here, or if I mess around with the, the outpost farm a bit more, that way I'm not working in the in the dark. So pretty happy with how it's turned out so far. There are some things about it that aren't quite the way I intended them to be. This is a this is actually a circular section that the that the main walls are built out of with kind of circular that corner sections, but it almost just looks flat from the outside. So that's not quite what I was going for. I think it still looks all right. And as you saw in the, the time lapse, I initially had some additional like support like structures out on the, the sides. I just didn't think they, they really fit in very well. So that's the, the main at least decorative structure for the for the outpost farm and for the future like sorting and storage for the for the raid farm. Basically complete. I just need to finish filling some stuff in at the end. Here are my nice little mega build perimeter. I'll hop over to creative now and show some things. So back here in my creative world, got a bunch of stuff out here. Was just testing out uh, ideas, trying to figure out what materials I could use next to each other. Ended up using a lot of like stone for low levels and andesite to give some variety in the in the walls because you have to add something. This is like for the for the lower level sections. This here is the the initial idea that I end up rejecting. I think there's just too much detail compared to the rest of the structure, so it didn't really fit. Even though I thought it looked nice. Uh, as it was, maybe if I had a way to detail more of the, the rest of the build, it would have made sense. But since the, <laughs> the build already took like way too long, already took like 20 hours, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not messing around with it. So I just sacrificed a little bit there. This here was me trying to figure out how to maybe add something so I could get boats up onto the, the elevators. But it's 
It seemed almost a little promising, but ultimately just didn't work. Because you can you can walk on it, but if you actually ride a boat into it, it, it doesn't it doesn't work anymore. So this is the basic mechanism I used to send the signal upwards. And again, by pulling out the soul sand block, it immediately changes the state of the of the water column. And you can see there's a slight delay before it uh, after the soul sand block gets placed back in before everything reacts a, a second time. And of course, you need the, the repeater here on two ticks in order to to interact with the redstone torch correctly. And to send the signal down from whatever height, again, you're just using the, the property of a trap door interacting with a wall to make that work. And for the output to call the elevator, I did add a pulse extender so that way, even if you spam it, it should only send one signal through in, uh, at least in the time that matters. So this worked out a basic flying machine. Here you have the two observers. There and there. I'll just pull everything up and down. And uh, at the top, you'll need to activate the observer there, and it'll start the flying machine off properly. At the bottom, you need to activate both of them because you have a, an extension here that's being pushed or pulled. So back at my double witch up perimeter, I also have my uh, mob head farm. I've run a little bit more, so I still have plenty of stuff to spare, but it is something that I definitely want to figure out how to upgrade when I update to the to be able to actually get lightning rods so I can figure out some way to basically automate the process so that at least the, the collection of charged creepers will be completely automated so I can just leave it running overnight or something and uh, actually collect this stuff instead of having to get lucky with a thunderstorm I'm actually sitting or <laughs> keeping an eye on my computer but while I'm here oh there's a <laughs> there's, there's a minecart missing that happens all the time well, they've got a bunch of slime balls just sitting out there it's great. Anyway, I actually went ahead and uh, crafted it up, crafted up the the full storage system here in the slime blocks, and uh, yeah, it's like over 150,000 <laughs> slime blocks crafted just from uh, one time going through the emptying out the entire storage system here. So the the slime farm style is more fun than efficient, but it it does work, <laughs> and just if you you AFK over time. Maybe while you're running the, the witch farms, then uh, you can collect the stuff up and it, it really does give you a like ridiculous amount. So that'll wrap things up for, for this video today. Hope you enjoyed the quick time lapse. It's, uh, it's a lot easier building stuff or running things if you, if you don't actually have the replay mod running and have to track and manage everything. But I think it's, it's kind of cool. And uh, I got some interesting ideas for what I'm working on next over here. I need a villager breeder. I'm going to... I, have a, I, think I, I think I have an interesting aesthetic design for that. And then also the, the Raid and the Hero of the Village Farm will be the, the last thing I'm heading at over in this direction with the sorting and crafting system and the like. So I've got a good bit of work to do before I have my first farm fully functional, but I've, at, least I've, at least I've made a little bit of a start. Cool. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed the video, and uh, y'all take care. Cheers.